A third Armageddon also well underway with quite a crazy position. We have been talking about Danis Lazovic having a slow strategic style. But take a look at what has come out of the opening. Maxime's king is in the center. White's knight on e4 eyeing those dark square weaknesses. I am loving Dennis's position here. If white is able to trade off those dark squared bishop with a move like bishop g5 and land a knight on either d6 or f6, this could be big trouble for Maxime. And Maxime is the one who's got six minutes on the clock. I don't need an evaluation bar <laughs> to tell me that this is a great opportunity for Dennis Lazvik. In a must-win position, you want chances. That's really all you can ask for. And not only does he have chances, he's got space. That pawn on e5 is a thorn in black side. It's covering some... The clock, and you have an attack. You force your opponent to kind of suffer, defend, 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 and only pounce later. Um, Dennis, he's spoiled for choice. And dream starts this game for him. I like what you just said, though. Instead of just going to quickly mate, rook f1 to b1, just continue to apply pressure on that black queen side. There's no rush over there. Black doesn't want to take on a4 anyway. So rook f1 to b1 instead of knight d6 check. I like your idea, David. I think actually that will be a better choice. The question, will Danis Lazovic be able to keep the tension? Undoubtedly, he knows that he's uh, managed to get big advantage out of the opening. But we know just how resistant and resourceful Maxime can be, how tricky he can be. Danis instead goes for a more direct approach. He gets that bishop pair and Maxime blitzes out his moves, putting pressure on that g2 pawn, tying down white's queen to defend it. But it looks like Danis had calculated his way forward. The bishop lands on e5, black's king not feeling safe, but you might be forced to put it on the queen side. Yeah, still very good, but I'm slightly afraid Lazovic is playing positionally in a position that kind of de demands dynamism at some point. That being said, white does have a dream position. Look at the clock as well. Maxime is not comfortable at all. We're used to seeing Maxime blitz, even in uh, kind of the most dubious of positions. But here Maxime is in the tank. That clock is ticking ever further down and still glorious for white. That bishop controls everything on e5. You see a move at a time for black. You know, castle queen side, good for you. That f1 rook does slide over to b1. That side of the board will open up sooner rather than later. And g5 played. Look at that desperation from Magnus. But the evaluation bar went all the way up. Do not take that pot on h5. Queen takes g2 would be checkmate. So that's what Maxi Can Dennis Lazovic finish off this job? He's so close. The queen moves back. Now, big questions. Do you trade off the bishop? Do you go for black stroke? Because bishop h7, you don't have so many squares yourself. First, Dennis decides to liquidate the queen side. Uh, he wants to trade off the rooks. There are a lot of pleasant choices already upon up. Wow, this is going to be a huge breakthrough in his career, in the tournament for Dennis Lazovic. This will fill him with confidence. This is... I mean, look at the control, the calmness. He's done the hard work. He realizes he doesn't even need to do much anymore. He's won a pawn, one material. He's just sneaking in now with the white queen, blocking black's counterplay. Black is stranded. Black is helpless. And Maxime didn't take the pawn back because he wanted to keep files closed. He thinks that if the second rook would appear on the queen side for white, that would have been disastrous. But this is no better. We see Dennis Lazvik pouncing, first establishing his bishop in the center, then taking a pawn, then slithering his queen forward up to g4. Maybe it goes to h5 and further into black's camp. But Maxime, he is trying desperately to close down the queen side, to close down that front so his king maybe can escape. But even if the king escapes, he's positionally in huge danger. And Black has to watch out of that uh, bishop from e4 moving to h7. And it has happened. Bishop oh. h7, is he about to win big material now? The rook, it's got no squares. You go to f8, the other bishop can jump on to uh, g7. g5 pawn is hanging. And Maxine gives up more pieces. Oof, this is just too much material. And uh, now white is up the exchange and a pawn. And look at the white d6 pawn. Just beautifully entrenched in Black's position. I don't see any counterplay. The white queen isn't trapped. She has squares. The only good thing for Maxime Vashilagrav is the black king for now is safe. The black knight is the glue holding everything together. Oh, and what a move. D5. Oh, so good. He just gave his pawn away. That square is covered by three different black pieces. And he says, take me with any of your pieces. The queen, it can slide in D4 all of a sudden, and it's going for checkmate. If the knight moves, A4 drops. More of an attack. So that was a wonderful decision. You see the eval bar approved of it. D5, that was sick. So classy. Those invisible moves, as we call them, on squares that are protected so many times by enemy pieces. They break the enemy's co coordination. They open up lines. And bishop to d4 back, lining up with the white queen, would have been a terminal threat there. OK, Maxime, he's fending things off move by move. But long term, he's busted. He's down material. And the black king is a target. He simply slides back. And uh, sooner or later, that white bishop will drop back, kick away the black knight, and everything will fall apart.
And that's all you need to do. The knight on b6 holds black's position just for now. And Dennis Lazovic finding the right squares for his pieces. He needs to put pressure on that knight. Bishop d4 will be the final touch to this. Dennis has to be feeling confident. And look at that clock. He's kept it under control on the clock as well. And this in no way is against uh, Maxime, but this will be a phenomenal, phenomenal win for Danis Lazovic. You have to feel happy for him if he gets the job done here. And Maxime now in time trouble. His king is being hunted. He's down material. And as you said, it's nothing against Maxime. We're all friends with him. He's a 2021 World Blitz champion. So for Dennis to just bring it to him, I think it will give him some serious confidence boost because instead of playing a quieter positional style, which we know he loves, he just said, let's go. And he went for an aggressive attacking game. And right now he's completely winning. But will he be able to convert? Yeah. this I'm sure every, a lot of the chat is perhaps rooting for Dennis right now but we know how tricky Maxime can be we've seen him trick his opponents with even in positions which look even more hopeless than this one so it's really not over that's the thing about these top players it's so hard to beat them even in positions that you're completely winning and finally that Bishop does arrive on d4 Bishop takes knight is the big threat Dennis is up in exchange what does he need to watch out for in these positions well, uh, it's hard to imagine too much going wrong for white, but now the d6 pawn has dropped. Watch out, your rook on a3 is hanging. Uh, Dennis blocks that threat. I guess he has, just, has to just cash in at the right time. You just want to make sure you don't kind of transition too early into an endgame where black keeps the a4 pawn alive, for example. Black keeps the d5 bishop on an outpost because there might be no way through later. So don't trade off everything. Don't take that black knight yet. That endgame might be holdable for black. Uh, so you just need to keep calm, you need to keep patient, and okay, he's building, rook to b4. I was wondering if the knight can drop back to d7 here, because if the bishop slides back to d4, e5, that almost traps the bishop, so he goes up instead of back. He saw this all. That was really brilliant by Dennis there, because now a4 is falling. The bishop on e7, you can go take that for black, as long as the rooks crash through the a-file, white will be winning. And because this has been so much action, we've just forgotten about some of the other Armageddon. Already one has been decided as Wesley So takes the win against Ali Reza Feruja. We've got our eye out on the Hikaru Magnus match. We will go to that. But for now, let's stick to this as it's about to reach its uh, final critical moments. Yep. H3 is a randomizer. It's a desperate attempt, but he's just collapsing now on the queen side. Maxim Vashilagrov, big threat of rook to a7 check there. So that was blocked, but Black's knight is not going to hold this one together for long. No, it's not. Take a pawn G2, leave it there. That's an umbrella pawn. Bring that bishop back to C5. Kick the knight out of there. It feels like white is just doming this game. He doesn't even go for the knight. He just takes pawns. Why not? There is no attack for Black. And that bishop will come on D4 with the same idea that you were pointing out, but he's picked up a key pawn along the way. Yeah, and the Black Knight desperately trying to defend squares now. Still no checks. Black's King is miraculously still surviving. You still need to land the killer blow. But look at the clock as well. We're at move 43. Maxime only has one minute left. You can even play for time right now. Okay, Queen H7, there is a hint of counterplay coming down to B1. Watch out for the White King. But it's just one check. It's just a ghost right now. Protect it, though. Cover it. And Maxime chances of counterplay should slip away. And you don't win the World Blitz Championship by accident. Maxime has done just that. And Queen H7 is one of those moves that you scare your opponent. But this isn't Blitz for both sides. Maxime is playing Bullet. And right now, Dennis is the one with five plus minutes on his clock. So Queen B1 check. Is it actually a threat? I would just avoid it altogether. But I think it is only a single check down there. And the king can pick up the G2 pawn. There is no checkmating attack. Yeah. Just when in doubt, though, protect, guard, kill the counterplay. White's rook could, at the very least, come back to the first rank, back to A1. Just stop any checks. No checks ever there. And uh, you can slowly but surely go about your business. Uh, Dennis, he's doing the right thing. He's so professional at such a young age. Slowing down. He's almost five minutes still. And uh, he just has to battle his own nerves. That's the only thing that can stop him now. Yeah, maturity there by Danis Lazovic, as in this critical moment, he knows he's got it in his hand, but he has to wrap it up as quickly as he can without giving any chance to Maxim Vashir Legrab. For MVL, you give him one opportunity and you know that it will be uh, it will be back to being a level game, but it looks like he's calculated his way through. He grabs a pawn, loses two pawns, but he keeps majority of his advantage. But I think Maxim should be pleased with this. I was surprised by that decision from Dennis to take a pawn uh, on g5. It looked like it was away from the action, but now black doesn't have very much material remaining. It's a rook and a pawn for just a knight. That knight is stuck defending. The black king is wide open. Uh, this would be a miracle for Maxime to survive. 
Oh, look at that check. Black is just immobilized now. Black can barely move. White's H-pawn could just motor down the board. That's a potential future queen. Uh, maybe he's looking for checkmate here, Denis Lazovic. Maybe there's something more. Queen, you got ideas like queen d6, but I think you have to watch out for threats here because knight into bishop, queen into bishop, and then suddenly bishop takes pawn could be a big tactic. So queen d6 might look like you're threatening checkmate, but you could just walk into some danger territory there. I think you just back that bishop up all the way towards your king, then bring your rook next to your king so there's no attack <laughs> whatsoever, and then that h-pawn goes up the board. So Dennis has everything under control, especially his time management. Uh, he started with a huge in the clock, that's the nature of Armageddon, but he's been taking it to Maxime, and he's only slowing down when he knows he needs to be precise. So cynical, Robert. I can tell you've done this before. That would be the most professional way of doing it, just uh, killing all risk in the position. But uh, still under control. Black's king coming out to c6. Surely it's time sooner rather than later to push that white h-pawn. Maybe he wants to uh, repurpose the white queen, which is a bit offside right now. He's still in control. What to do next? Where's the killer blow? All right, uh, well, uh, Dennis Lazowick looks like he knows exactly what he's doing. The rook might jump into a7. The h-pawn might start it.